Welcome back, everyone, to West Explains Best. Today we're doing section 11.6 notes, which is surface area and volume of spheres. This is a very relevant section. Obviously, we live on a sphere called planet Earth. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the basics of a sphere. So in the middle of the sphere, we have what's known as the center. Okay. Uh, in orange, we have the radius. And then we have the circumference here in purple. Now, there's a lot of similarities to a circle when we talk about spheres. Obviously, the sphere is the three-dimensional form of the circle. Um, but there's just, you know, obviously, because it's three dimensions we're talking about, there's a little bit of variation we have. Now, one thing you can notice is if you cut... Uh, this plane, if you take a knife and you cut through the thing about cutting through an orange or an apple, orange is better because it's more spherical. This orange slice that doesn't go through the diameter, through the center of the, um, the sphere is called a small circle. So that's a small circle. Whereas this, and that would be the outline here, that little, that, that little ring. Whereas if you were to cut something like this, this would be called a great circle. So the great circle is the largest circle that be uh, cross section of a sphere. Now, if we cut a sphere in half, it would form what's called a hemisphere. So if you were to cut this in half, think about cutting an orange in half, you'd have a hemisphere. So surface area is spheres. I'm not getting into the proofs today, but if you want the surface area of, the, of a sphere, it's simply four times pi r squared. So if we have four circles, the area of circle is pi r squared, multiply that by four, four of those areas, that is equal to the surface sphere area of an entire sphere. So pretty neat that it works out like that. So here we have, find the surface area of the sphere, given a diameter of 10, we don't want the diameter, we want the radius, and so of course that's half of that. So we have five meters. Now we're just gonna apply our formula, so surface area is equal to four pi r squared, or four times pi times 25, because that's five squared. Let me write five squared, that's a little bit more precise, a little bit more neat, five squared. So we have 25, times four, which is 100 pi units or meters squared. If we wanted to multiply that out, we would do 3.14, 314 meters squared approximately. 3.14159, so it's about 314 meters squared. I like it in terms of pi, but I just wanted to show you both. Find the surface area of this hemisphere. So it's a little bit more difficult with this. Um, now, one thing you got to keep in mind, it's not just going to be the surface area divided by two, okay? So the surface, surface area of a hemisphere is going to be equal to the surface area of a sphere divided by two of sphere. But that would just be on the outside, okay? When we're talking about surface area, we're just talking about the, the outside. Um, so we would need to also include this new newly created inside portion, which would be the area of a circle, pi r squared. So we're gonna do the surface area of a, a sphere divided by two plus pi r squared. Surface area of the sphere is four pi r squared divided by two, and then we're gonna add pi r squared. We know that the radius is five, so let's go ahead and plug that in. We have four times pi times five squared divided by two plus pi times five squared. That is equal to 100 pi <clears throat> divided by two, plus 25 pi, that's equal to 50 pi plus 25 pi or 75 pi centimeters squared. If you wanted to multiply that out in the calculator, you could, but I'd like 75 pi centimeters squared. That's good enough for me. Now, volume of spheres. This is a little bit more tricky. Again, we're not going over the proof today but it's equal to four thirds pi r cubed because we're dealing with uh, three dimensional space. Volume is how much space is occupied in three dimensions. We need to cube the radius this time. Okay, so of course, all we need, we need to make sure we have a radius, we have uh, everything that we need. So let's go ahead and get started on this problem. Hopefully we have some Star Wars fans. 
That's no moon is the setup. The radius of this spherical space station is 150 kilometers. What is its volume? So that's actually from, that's accurate uh, compared to what the movies portray. So let's go ahead and plug that in. We're just going to be copying this formula. Volume equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. We have 4 over 3 pi. And then we have our radius, which is 150, and we're going to cube it. Whew, we're going to have some big numbers here. Maybe this was a mistake. 150. We're going to cube that. Oh, boy. We get 4 over 3 times pi times 3375123. That's 3,375,000. Okay, and we're going to multiply this by 4. Divide the by 3. And we get 400. What is this? 4 million, 4.5 million pi uh, kilometers uh, cubed. Pi kilometers cubed. Now, I just because I like to see what that number is, we're going to actually multiply this by pi to get a sense of scale of how big this thing is times pi. So we get one. Did I get enough zeros? One, two, three, four, five. Yes, it. Okay. So we have one, four, one, three, seven, one, six, six point nine four kilometers cubed. One. So about fourteen million cubic kilometers. That is absolutely massive. That is humongous. Definitely bigger than anything here on Earth. So that is pretty impressive that it can hold that much space that much stuff huh space no i guess that is a good uh name for it then a space station okay the volume of a sphere is 5,000 meters cubed what is the surface area now we're going to be working backwards we know that volume is equal to 4 over 3 pi r cubed so we know our volume whoops oh apple pencil problems 5,000 equals 4 over 3 pi r cubed now what we're trying to do here is we're trying to solve for r. So we need to get the r by itself. We're going to use a little bit of algebra here. First thing I would do is I would divide, uh, well, I would multiply both sides by the reciprocal of four over th or four over three, which is three over four. And technically, you'd, you'd include the pi in there, but I want to make this easy for everyone, so I'm just going to leave the pi out of it for now. So I have five thousand times three divided by four, and I get. 3750 equals pi times my radius cubed. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in decimal form. So I'm going to have divide both sides by pi now. So I divide this by pi and I get 1193.66 equals r cubed. Now how do I undo this r cubed? I have to do the opposite of this r cubed. The opposite of cubing it is taking the cube root. So hopefully you can find this button on your calculator. It should look like um, maybe it has like a little Y there. So you can input what root you want. That's one way to do it. Um, so hopefully you can find that button. But we're going to be taking the cubed root of both sides. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. Equals. And I get about R equals about 10.61 rounded. Okay, now that I have R equals 10.61, I'm ready to calculate my surface area. So surface area is equal to 4 pi R squared. I know my R is 10.61. So I do 10.61 squared times by pi times by 4. And since I'm already doing it in decimal form, I might as well multiply this all out. So I raise this to the second power. I multiply by pi. I multiply by 4. And I get surface area equals 1414. Approximately, I'm going to put the about. And then what are our units? Meters squared. So because we're talking about volume, meters cubed. Surface area, meters squared. Two dimensions. There's our answer. Nice, sweet, short section. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time on West Explains Best. Take care.